Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just finished going over the big three games from week one of the college football slate as they are in today's schedule, that being Coastal Carolina taking on Jackson State, North Dakota State taking on Colorado, and UNC taking on Minnesota. In this segment here, we are going to talk a little bit about fantasy football. We did our wide receiver and our running back predictions slash uh, rankings, I'll say, uh, on the earlier parts of this week. Today, we take a look at the quarterback position, a position that there's a lot of different ways to draft them. Now, I have a 1 through 24 list here for you, but before we get into that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net, or if you are on YouTube, you can use that super chat feature. If you do either of those two things, a message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see if you do have a burning question about sports anything at all that you would like to ask go and throw that in the comments throw it in the chat i will get to it as soon as i possibly can i appreciate everybody so much for sticking around talking some sports with me here on a beautiful thursday afternoon but like i was saying in this segment here we are going to talk about our fantasy football quarterback rankings and just like we've done for the past couple days I've got you a 1 through 24 list here some of it might be surprising some of it might be kind of chalk but this is a quarterback position where there's a lot of different strategies you can go get one of those top five top six ish guys you can reach on them getting them in the third round somewhere like that or you can wait to get somewhere in the 13 14 15 range you know get them later on get them in the 10th round ish now all of this is different if you draft two quarterbacks super flex there's all these different strategies which is why we're not going by round we're just doing a ranking so without further ado my number one quarterback is josh allen he was the number one quarterback last year and you'll see a trend with these guys that are at the top it's not everyone but just about everyone at the top has that rushing upside. It's simple math. Every 10 yards you rush the ball, you get a point. Every 25 yards in general, you throw the ball, you get one point, right? 10 points for 100 rushing, 4 points for 100 passing. It's much easier to rack up these rushing yard points, and it just gives you a big advantage over these other quarterbacks. Now, they're not here competing with running backs for rushing yards, at least not most of them, but that extra 40 points can push you ahead, which is why guys like Josh Allen is at the top. He has that arm talent to compete with some of the best throwers in the league, as well as the, as the talent with his legs to go and compete with even some running backs in this league. He's at the top. That shouldn't change. At number two, Lamar Jackson. Again, we talk about rushing upside. No one in the league has more rushing upside than Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is coming off his second MVP. He is going to break the all-time quarterback rushing record. I believe he only needs about 800 yards to do that, break Mike Vick's record. That should happen this year. That's 80, 90 points right there that you can get. This guy is a quarterback that flirts with 1,000 yards rushing. Bringing in Derrick Henry should only help him with that. Now, I know he's had to po focus more on passing, but that should help him in the passing numbers as well. More, more receivers and more weapons is always good for a quarterback. At three, Jalen Hurts. Again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but rushing upside. Right there, he gets all those QB sneaks at the one. He is their goal line back. That's a lot of points, a lot of touchdowns. Six points on the rushing touchdowns in almost every league. I know some leagues do passing touchdowns at six, some do four, but every league rushing touchdowns are six. That's extra two points on your touchdowns right there. He is the goal line back, right? He is getting those rushing yards. He is one of those great passers. He has elite weapons. Add Saquon Barkley, who again, much like Derrick Henry, is going to help him more rushing lanes help him in the RPO. This is going to be a great fit for him. He stays at number three. At number four, we get Patrick Mahomes. And this time I'll say a little thing, a little bit different. Not rushing upside is the first thing. He still has that little bit of scrambler in him, but he's a pass first quarterback, but he's one of the best. He adds weapons. Juju Smith-Schuster just signs. I know, not, I know that's not the big signing. It seems like Rashi Rice is not going to be suspended at all, which 
somehow the Chiefs catch a break on that one. I don't know how he doesn't get suspended for anything that he did over the offseason, but that's a whole nother conversation. Bring in Xavier Worthy from the draft. That's huge. They sign Hollywood Brown. That's huge. This is a much better wide receiver room. They cut Kadarius Toney. Much better situation, weapons for him to throw, and they still have Travis Kelsey. There's no reason to doubt Patrick Mahomes. He's here at five. Or at four, excuse me. At five, we have C.J. Stroud. Again, another one of these guys kind of in the same range as Patrick Mahomes. He's got a little bit and uh, of rushing yards in him. He's not a guy that's going to compete with Lamar Jackson for the quarterback rushing title, but he is a guy that has weapons galore around him. He already had Tank Dell and Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz, three really good weapons, guys that probably could be targeted and be fantasy relevant, based just about all of them. You also bring in Joe Mixon, who finished in the top 12 for running backs last season. You bring in Stephon Diggs, who kind of fell off a cliff towards the end, but is still an elite receiver in this league. That is that's a lot of weapons for this guy to throw to, and he still has his legs. This Texans offense is going to be super fun to watch this year. At number six, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is here because Dak Prescott puts up numbers. He's going to throw for a bajillion yards. He's going to throw a bunch of touchdowns because they don't have a running game. Ezekiel Elliott, they just signed Dalvin Cook. What's that going to do? What is Dalvin Cook going to do for this offense? If Dalvin Cook is your answer at offense, that is not a good sign. But you have CeeDee Lamb. You've locked down CeeDee Lamb. It's a contract year for Dak Prescott. He's going to play his mind out because it doesn't sound like he's getting a deal done before the season starts. So we'll see what happens, but Dak Prescott is my number six quarterback. At number seven, we have Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow is kind of the opposite of Dak, Dak Prescott. He's already got his contract. Both of his receivers might be leaving. Jamar Chase we'll get into later. He isn't practicing right now, which is a whole situation, like I said. We'll cover that later on in the show. T. Higgins on the franchise tag. Sounds like he's out of here after this season, even though as much as he wants to stay in Cincinnati, he seems like he really has grown to love playing in Cincinnati. Joe Burrow lost a couple weapons, but he's going to be healthy. That Bengals O-line is going to be fine, and he'll be able to put up numbers. He's here at 7. At number 8, I have Kyler Murray. He's a guy that can compete with Lamar Jackson for rushing yards. He is quick, elusive, and he's got a really talented arm. They brought in weapons for him. They still have Trey McBride. Uh, Greg Dortch is kind of a super late-round guy that might be worth a pickup in some deeper leagues. You have Marvin Harrison Jr., of course, who I think is going to explode onto the scene. 1,400 yards, 1,500 yards absolutely is possible for him. They should feed him as much as humanly possible. This is a good offense with Kyler Murray running it. He's here at 8. At number nine, Anthony Richardson, another one of those question mark quarterbacks. He could be as high. I've seen him ranked as high as number one, which number one for Anthony Richardson is kind of ridiculous, but he gets a lot of comps to Josh Allen, Cam Newton. You see it. I see it. There's a reason he gets these comps. He's a freak athlete. He's got a great arm. If he can stay accurate and put it all together this season, there's no reason to believe that Anthony Richardson doesn't finish as a top 10 quarterback. At number 10, rounding out that top 10 is Jordan Love. Jordan Love earned himself a $55 million extension with his with his performance down the stretch. It took him a little bit to get used to NFL defenses, the speed of play, but he figured it out. He took the Packers on a run, won a playoff game. Packers are going to be good. It's a really young, deep receiving core in Green Bay. It goes about six deep for them. Jordan Love should be able to find them. They lose Aaron Jones, which I think is a loss in the passing game. But I do love what Jordan Love does for these Packers and for fantasy. At number 11, Jaden Daniels. Rookie. The first rookie on the board here. And a lot of you might be surprised by that. Why not Caleb Williams here? Say it with me. It's two words. It's rushing upside. That's all it is. Jaden Daniels is a guy that has the ability to, again, compete with Lamar Jackson to, for that quarterback rushing title, as I'm calling it. He's a guy that has the arm talent. You see, if you've watched him play in college, he, he can take a hit or two, which is the big thing that people are worried about with injuries. But as long as he stays healthy, which is what all these predictions are assuming, Jaden Daniels should be a top 12 quarterback, a QB1 uh, for fantasy purposes. 
And rounding out that QB1 group, I have Aaron Rodgers. I've heard a lot of doubt thrown on Aaron Rodgers this offseason, and I really don't get it. I've people I've heard people say he's washed. The last time we saw Aaron Rodgers play, he was playing at an MVP level. Now, I know he's been up in controversy for everything he does off the field, but we're looking at his on-the-field play. And the last time we saw him play, we the last time we actually saw him play, he was at an MVP level in Green Bay. He played four snaps last season, and people think he's done. He's washed. He's a guy that's won four MVPs in his career. There's no reason to believe, with everything we've seen out of him, that he isn't going to be able to do what he does. He isn't a guy that relies on his mobility too much. Now, he is elusive in the pocket. He's really good at that pocket movement, but so is Tom Brady, right? You don't look at Tom Brady and say, oh, he couldn't have come back from his injury. Now, his injury happened when he was a lot younger, and I'm well aware of that. But Aaron Rodgers, I feel like, is getting unnecessary hate for his ability on the football field. But anyway, let me know what you think. These are the top 12 quarterbacks I have. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to go over the back half of this list, the QB2s for fantasy purposes. Let me know what you think. We're going to take a quick break here. Stick around. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 